what we've just been examining are two aspects of short-term memory. How well you acquire and then instantly recognize or recall images and words before you have a chance to forget them. But our memory relies on two systems. As well as being able to manipulate information in the short term, you need to be able to retain it in your long-term memory. That's where the storage and retrieval comes in. So how do these processes translate into people's everyday lives? For Dave Frost, the answer is not very well at all. Hi, I'm Dave. Hi, Ross. Hi, Man. Hi, I'm Lucy. I forgot to remember. Dave and his family live on the northeast coast. He's a loving husband and father. But relationships are rather cool in the Frost household. My dad's memory's really bad. It has a great impact on my home life. It doesn't always lock up on a night. You forget to pick you up. Then we might go for a coffee and we'll get in. I've forgotten my wallet. He won't remember anything if Mum doesn't remind him. He's letting us down, really. So why is his memory so bad? I would say a lot of it is like a man thing and I can only do one job at a time. Get one thing into my head, get distracted by something else, and the first thing I was doing just disappears. And that happened so many times. Oh, oh. To try to bring some harmony to the Frost's home, we sent along memory master Tony Bazan. Delighted to meet you. Tony Delighted believes to that you. anyone can improve their memory, but first he finds out how Dave remembers things. If I say to you, Apple, what happens in your head? I think of tree. Now, did you get a, a statement or did you get a picture of a tree? Picture. Picture of a tree. Mm -hmm. Your brain is working perfectly. But I, <laughs> I think my wife would uh, tend to argue with you on that point. <laughs> this quick test shows how most people's mind works. Objects and items are usually best remembered with visual images. Tony is going to use this fact to teach Dave a basic memory technique. And for that, they need to take a walk. Dave's problem is not his memory. His problem is that he hasn't been using it. When he's supposed to be memorizing something, he's having a daydream, he's thinking about something else, and he knows that he's not going to remember it anyway, so why bother? So he's actually trained himself to forget. But it's not all bad news. Dave's good visual memory allows Tony to teach him a new way of remembering. It's called the Roman Room Method. The Roman Room Method is where you imagine a Roman room and you have specific things in it, a vase, a sofa, a lamp. And to those items in your room, you connect the things you want to remember. But the Roman room method works best when you use a familiar environment, either the house where you live or a landscape that you know well. So he, he now has locations and images throughout this glorious landscape. And he can just place in his imagination the things that he wants to remember. To ensure Dave learns this new technique, Tony sets him a test that he hopes will provide Anne with a well-earned rest. I'm going to give you a list of 20 items for shopping, and you are going to memorize. <laughs> <laughs> and you are going to memorize the list. You are going to buy the items you need, and you are going to cook a wonderful meal for the family. I difficulty getting a sandwich. <laughs> Over the next few days, Dave spends his time memorizing the shopping list. On the menu is the family's favorite, roast beef with all the trimmings. Dave needs to transfer the list from his short term to his long term memory. To do this, he is encoding it by visually linking each ingredient to landmarks in the order that they will appear on his usual coastal walk. The smokestacks which look like upended parsnips. Cooling towers look like big tins, and the big tins of fruit from the trifle. I'm looking up to see and see the ships in the harbour. Some of them coloured orange, some red, remind me of carrots. This way of storing the information will make it easier for Dave to retrieve it from his long-term memory, in the correct order he needs to. So the day of reckoning arrives, and Dave heads to the supermarket, armed only with his memory. The thing I can see now from the, from the end of the pier is the big old house. And that's the main thing I can see. And the main figure of me was the beef, isn't it? We're looking down the coast and we can see the blast furnace and red cap, the blast furnace, the 
really hot oven, and you need a really hot oven to do Yorkshire puddings. As Dave makes his imaginary walk along the coast, each item is ticked off the list. Oh, I really think he's gone and done it. What do you think of that? 28 and your dad's a memory genius. Dave's shopping has been a big success. All he has to do now is to cook for lunch. And as every good cook knows, the most difficult thing about a roast is getting everything on the table at the same time. And that means cooking things in the right order. The Roman room method also allows him to do this as he retraces his steps on the pre-planned route. Dave seems to be progressing well. But distractions mean he struggles to keep his mind on the job. So I've had a, a memory empire on the Right. You can see the flare stacks and you look at the flare stacks and it reminded me of sort of like upturned parsnips, which should be in. And as lunchtime approaches, the potatoes aren't the only thing at boiling point. Look, I have, I have time, obviously. You're going to bow, just stand and think. What else are we having? Are you so? Yes. Hurry up. Where are you going now? Where are we? Right, come on then. Bloody hell. Oh. Three hours and 19 ingredients later, he's almost done it. There's just one more thing. Where shall I put this beef? Don't tell me. Success. There you go. Cheers. Cheers. Get a free trial of the world's best scientific brain games at www.getbraingames.com.